Hello, Mac the Irish Football Fan TV. This is the team of the year. The se season's finally finished after the coronavirus and everything else. I'm joined by Gary Spain and Paul Tierney, and we're going to get straight in. So, the way this format's going to work, if anyone's watching at home, we're all going to give our own separate teams of the season. We're going to go through position for position. Um, it's not going to be a case where we all have to agree on a player to go into position. We're all just giving our own players. So we'll start off with the goalkeepers. And for my position for goalkeeper, I've actually gone with Kieran O'Hara. I know he's been released by Manchester United. But if I'm looking at all the other goalkeepers regarding the Republic of Ireland and one that had been in the squad, I suppose, in the last campaign he was involved in the squad. I know he played friendlies and stuff like that. But uh, for me, O'Hara, I mean, if I'm going... To look at his stats, I mean, he's played 33 games for Burton Albion. He kept nine clean sheets. He's 24. He's, he's in my opinion, the only real Irish goalkeeper that was first choice this season. Um, I know there'll be an argument for Darren Randolph. I just don't think he's played enough games. Um, or you could argue the level that uh, O'Hara is playing at, and I understand that. But for me, I've gone with O'Hara, just purely down to the fact that he's been playing uh, first team football this season Gary uh, I'll let you choose your goalkeeper okay Paul well I'm going to have to disagree with you I have gone for Darren Randolph and, and it is down he's played seven he's made 17 appearances this season it's not ideal I definitely like to see him get more game time he hasn't played since January which is a concern but his appearances were either with Biddlesbrough in the championship or a, a couple with West Ham in the Premier League and I think just the higher level edges it for me and I, I i wasn't going down to league one for a goalkeeper so that's why i went for dan randolph okay well i can see i can see why you've gone from paul i'll let you um i'll let you pick your goalkeeper now and then we'll kind of see what way we're what, what way we're at yeah well uh i'm gonna agree with you paul i went for karen o'hara as well simply because uh it was a tough year for irish goalkeepers i think in general a lot of them weren't really playing consistently he was the only one who actually was he kept nine clean sheets as you mentioned played 33 games and i still think league one is a decent level you've got players in international squads in that league as well he played for ireland as well uh in a couple of friendies which still counts so for me Kieran o'hara he was unlucky to get released by united as well and i think a few Higher, higher up teams in League One and lower Championship sides so be looking to sign them this summer. Well, I, I don't. I think when the lads did the previous team of the year, I think they mentioned the fact that when I think Darren Randolph was twenty four, I think he was uh, playing at League One, and then he went to Motherwell, came back, and that, that's when he started doing well for Birmingham. Then he started getting a look in more Ireland and stuff like that. So he can mm. definitely take some sort of motivation from what he's done. And maybe bring it on to himself. I mean, he's not a bad goal. He's very athletic. Um, caused a bit of controversy. I think he bit someone and was banned for a while as well. So I think mm. there's a bit of controversy there. He might be a bit of a looper, <laughs> but um, I've just purely picked him. Uh, he he wasn't like uh, spectacular for me, but he was just purely down to the fact that he was first team goalkeeper. Mark Travers may go on next season with Bournemouth now that they've been relegated. He may go on to be you know, their keeper and maybe our future number one. But it is worrying, as you said, Gary, the fact that Darren hasn't played since January and if you're looking around the Irish national team for another goalkeeper, I know there's ones coming through the youths and stuff like that, but if you're actually looking at, um, you know, if anything ever happened to Randolph between now and the playoffs, you'd wonder who would actually step in goals. Yeah, well, actually, Bournemouth going down could actually be good news um, for Mark Travers because I think Ramsdale, their current number one, is an excellent keeper. He may decide... Uh, to stay in the Premier League, which now I know Mark Travers was actually third choice towards the end of the season, but uh, he's very young and hopefully he'll get the chance to be number one in the Championship next season. It is a worry. I mean, Kieran O'Hara probably is the person who will step up because he has played regularly. Has Darren gone to West Ham to be number two again next season? Um, that's the worry and that's a concern. And I mean, yeah, I think he is our best keeper. I think he will be Stephen Kenny's number one, but hopefully he'll get enough enough game time. And 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 it's a it's a problem position. We do have some good goalkeepers coming through. I really like Gavin Bazuna, but it'll be a few years before I think we'll see him in the the senior squad. Yeah, well, well, there's no point in kind of dwelling on it anyway. Yeah, I think we'll move straight on to to right back, and I think this will be a clean sweep. 
Matt Doherty at Wolves. I mean, I'm going to look at the stats here, but he has. Uh, he's Well, he's one of the best right backs in Europe. We all know that. Uh, Wolves are flying high in the Europa League and in the Premier League. He's got 48 appearances in all competitions this season with seven goals, two in the Europa League and one in the qualifying for the Europa League. And he's got five assists, I think four in the league and one in Europe. Um, he's... You know, he's been in the start in 11, 84% of their games and he's played 83% of their minutes in the Premier League. He has been, the last two seasons, absolutely unbelievable in my opinion. And I, you know, I just don't see anyone else getting in there ahead of him. I think Matt's absolutely fantastic. Gary, who's your pick? Yeah, Matt was my pick. I was all set to argue Seamus Coleman with you, Paul. But um, <laughs> <laughs> And Seamus has been a great servant to us, but Matt Doherty has been the best Irish right back, without question, I think, this season. And uh, glad to see you've picked him. And uh, no Everton bias there, but yeah, it has to be Matt. Yeah, well, I, I was. I, I, you can't, like, you can't argue facts and numbers, and, and that's mm. what Matt brings. Uh, Paul, who's your pick? Yeah, well, my pick is Matt Doherty as well. I think it, it, there's no cont- contesting it, like you've said. His stats alone tell it. And I think you look at the goals he's got, they've been important goals as well. The goal again, the winner against City at, just after Christmas. You know, there's certain other things, even in Europa League qualifying, he got an important goal there. And he scored for us as well against Denmark to get us back in the game, which was crucial at the time as well. Uh, so yeah, Matt Doherty all day for me. Yeah, I think as well. Another thing we got kind of have to mention, like we have honourable mentions. We didn't really have much with the two with the two goalkeepers. I mean, you look past them, we didn't really have anyone else. But you've got Seamus Coleman, who had thirty appearances, one assist in the league, and you know Everton finished their lowest since o three o four. I'm pretty sure. Um, and then Dara O'Shea at West Brom, who I'm actually going to come to later on. Um, but. I think Dara finished the season so strongly and really, really done well in a position that he's not really known to be, you know, played there and really stepped in when West Brom needed him. And he was a key part of them getting up to the championship, especially since the restart, scoring a a few goals and stuff like that. And I just think he's a super, super player. Um, But Matt Doherty, I mean, look, we've, we've all kind of agreed on it. He's just, he's on another level right now and he's performing you know, other than maybe Alexander Arnold, I can't think of too many right backs who are ahead of him in the in, in world football or European football right now. And that's not an Irish bias. I think that's just you know, I yeah. think you have to be truthful there. Definitely. Yeah, well then I suppose we'll move on to left back. Um and Enda Stevens gets in my team. Just like like a goal like Matt Arty, I know Enda hasn't been playing in Europe, but um, in the Premier League, he's just been so consistent and you know up there definitely again. And I, I, I mentioned there about Alexander Arnold and not seeing it, maybe other than Robertson. I haven't seen too many you know left backs that have been up there with end. I mean, it, he's played every game for Sheffield United this season. Um, he played 90% of their minutes, he played 100% of their games, and he has, I think, 40, yeah, it's 40 appearances overall in all competitions, two goals and four assists. And to be operating at the level that he has in his debut season at the Premier League, I just think that you can't look past Enda Stevens. And I'm talking like consistency. He played every game. He he started every game for for Sheffield United. I think he got injured in one game, and that's kind of why he went off and he was missing minutes. I think that was the big worry then, because when it's coming to the playoffs time, he was going to be ruled out, wasn't he? So he actually was kind of blessed in a way by the coronavirus and was able to come on and. And helped Sheffield United finish the season. They they had a bit of a mixed finish, but they, I thought all in all they finished the season strongly and, and got their best uh, place since I think nineteen seventy four seventy five season. Gary, who's yours? Yeah, well, Enda Stevens for me is a no brainer as well. Um, one player I would like to mention, a very honourable mention, is Ryan Manning, with forty four appearances, forty four starts, I think, and five goals for QPR. He's had a really good season as a converted left back. Seven and assists, uh, yeah. yeah, an excellent, an excellent option. Uh, I was a bit disappointed with Sheffield United's end to the season, actually. Uh, before lockdown, they were in prime position to qualify at least for the Europa League. And uh, made, you know, look, they played, they had a couple of really great wins and they hammered Chelsea, really impressive. But ultimately, they've missed out now on the Europa League. And uh, that for me is a little bit of a disappointment. It would have been great to see our lads playing European football next season. Um, but 
I, I'm not trying to take away from their situation. It was a, I mean, they probably would have been happy to stay up. And instead, as they said, they finished in the highest position for years. So it was, it was a brilliant season. Bit disappointed they fell away, but Enda Stevens has been the best Irish left back, I think, without question. And uh, I think it's a no brainer. Yeah, Paul. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm going to go the same as well. Enda Stevens and honourable mention to Manning as well. He had a great season for QPR. But uh, Stevens, you even look at playing for Ireland as well. He played seven out of the eight qualifiers and probably the only one he was maybe a bit wasn't really himself was against Switzerland, where he probably could have been sent off as well. But uh, yeah, Stevens for me, consistent all the way through. The way Sheffield United play, they emulate their manager and he's a big part of that. And that's why he's in for me. Yeah, well, I, I, I agree with you. And I'm glad you just gave an honourable mention for Manning because I did have him down as an honourable mention. But what, the way we'll do it going forward is we'll pick our picks and then we'll go through the honourable mentions or kind of who missed out and that kind of way. Um, But yeah, I, I had I was I was thinking about if we were going to do uh, one player per team that, you know, I think Manning would get in that way because I think you'd have maybe, well, I know I'd have John Egan as, as the... Uh, standout player for me from Sheffield United but I know we'll, we'll come on to him now because we're going to go into the centre-backs and my two that I've gone with are John Egan and Dara O'Shea I know Dara hasn't been playing right back but I went back and looked at the team of the team of the season that the lads did and they had Kieran Clark in there who had 14 appearances and they had Shane Duffy who had been playing I know you might say he wasn't playing centre-back but for me I, I just thought the way he finished the season so strongly, the fact that West Brom got promoted, the fact that he was scoring goals and getting involved. And I think in the last game, he did play centre-back, albeit for a while, but I think he is he the did. future yeah. of that of our centre-backs anyway. I just think the way he finished the season just edges him over Clark and Duffy. And I know Duffy doesn't have the best of seasons. Um, I've got honourable mentions there, which I will come to, but I'd be interested to hear your uh, picks. Gary, I'll start with you. Paul, I actually went with the same as you. I actually went for Darrow O'Shea as well. He's 20 starts, one off the bench. He forced his way into a very good West Brom side that that earned automatic promotion. And uh, I, I, as you said, he played right back. He only played, I think, one game at centre-back, but he is a centre-half, and that is going to be his position, I think, going forward. And uh, I thought he did so much in the second half of the season. He was impossible to leave out. Now, I would say if... If I was picking the team to play Bulgaria, I, I would have Shane Duffy ahead of him. But yeah. we're picking our Irish team of the season based on the performance. And it wasn't a good year for Shane. 14 starts, seven sub-appearances. So, yeah, I went for Darrow Shea. And, and John Egan, again, is a no-brainer. I don't think there's even... I don't think there'll be any other argument for anyone else. Yeah, Paul, what's yours before we get into the kind of honourable mentions and stuff? Well, I, I'll agree with you on John Egan. I think he's, a, he's obviously a superstar and he's been put in some other... Uh, uh, high-profile Premier League team of the seasons as well. But uh, the one I'm going to go for, just because Darrow Shea has played a lot of the season at right back, I'm going to go for Darrow Lenehan at centre-half from Blackburn. Now, the reason I'm going to go for that is he played 37 games out of 46. He got three goals and two assists, which is real consistency, and they ended up finishing 11th in the championship. The one for me is they got 11 clean sheets from the season and he made his 150th appearance for Blackburn, which, I mean, he'll be there next year as well unless another team picks him up. He's had a very good season, very consistent, probably unlucky not to get a cap for Ireland in some of the games. Uh, I think the clean sheets for me say that I, they kept 11, which is, it's not a very eye-catching Blackburn side, but it's good going. So Daryl Lennon in there for me. Yeah, I think one thing we'll all agree on is that, well, for me, um, John Egan has has been the best centre back, uh, Irish centre back this season without a shadow of a doubt. For me, he'd be my Irish player of the season, but that's just me. You might have Doherty or Stevens or whatever, but I think it's a fair case of an argument for 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 all of them really. But for me, the standout player for for this season, one hundred percent for me anyway, was was Egan. And um, I think you you've got honourable mentions there. Connor Masson had a great breakthrough season as well. And um, then you had, as you said there, Lenehan. You've got Shane Duffy. But there wasn't that many. I think Kieran Clark might have got in there had he played. He he really, you know, had a 
a really good resurrection this season, you know. He, but then he yeah, got, six, got... sixteen starts, Paul. He, he did make sixteen starts. He was in. Uh, he was in the reckoning. I would have him as an honourable mention. And he had injuries as well, so I think he was playing pretty well with Newcastle. Yeah, well, that's what I was going to say. If, yeah. he, if he hadn't got injured, I think he, he probably would be alongside Egan. But the fact that you know he hasn't, then O'Shea's played more games, and I know we're we're speaking about playing right back, or whatever. But I think in the, his natural position will be centre back, so we're not exactly going plucking him from obscurity and putting him into a pl- position that he doesn't play. We we are putting him in his natural position, albeit he didn't play there that much. But I think he, he, you know he, he putting him in there. I, I don't think too many people will disagree. Um, but onto midfield then, and my midfield consists of. Jason Malumbi, James McCarthy, and Jason Knight. I've gone with those three. I, I mean, I, the one thing when I was looking through the, the stats, I know, look, uh, Malumbi has 40 appearances in all competitions. Uh, one goal, one assist. He was hardly done by with another goal as well. He's become a huge hit with the under-21s. He's the captain of the under-21s for Ireland. Millwall as well. Uh, I mean, he's a fan's favourite. The fans didn't want him to leave. They all want to sign him from... Brighton and they've all I've never seen a player get such a you know nice well wishes and stuff like that to go on and do stuff James McCarthy he has 35 appearances in all competitions Um, he's no goals or assists but he, like, he's got a, ta- a tackle success of 57% his recoveries are 103 I think Roy Hodgson's been patient with McCarthy this season and he's repaid him with a number of great appearance, appearances and performances Um, I actually you know we all know by now I'm an Everton fan and I was gutted and I think Everton really missed James McCarthy this season of all seasons they've had an absolute hole in the middle since he's gone and I think McCarthy has shown why he's been missed in the Irish team as well I think you know it, it goes without saying uh, Stephen Kenny has been all over him and you know, kind of keeps talking him up in the in the media and whatever and then Jason Knight I mean if you're talking about breakthrough seasons I mean he's, he, he had um, 31 appearances in the league, three appearances in the FA Cup, three, uh, one appearance in the EFL Cup. He's got six goals, one assist. Um, albeit he only played, uh, he was only f- in the start in 11, 43% of their games. Uh, 40, he played 44% of the playing minutes and he was involved in 11% of the goal participation. Yeah, I mean, it's no coincidence that Rooney and Koku are, are talking so highly about him. Um, and you look at, as I mentioned there, the lack of minutes, and he was still scoring goals, a lot of them probably off the bench, but for me, you're talking about that that attacking midfield role, I think Jason Knight is the perfect player, and I look forward to seeing what he can produce next season. Gary, what's your midfield? So my midfield is a bit different, Paul, although I did agonise over this quite a bit. I did go for James McCarthy in the holding role, Um I had 17 starts and 17 sub appearances, actually. Maybe we're one out. I'm not sure where that's coming from. But anyway, that's not really the point. I think his form since lockdown has been great. And I think the other contender for me at that role was Josh Cullen, actually, who's had a pretty decent season for Charlton. But again, I'm going to the level that James is playing at. And I I think particularly his form since lockdown. The other two, I've actually gone for the two players in the Premier League is Jeff Hendrick with 24 starts and Conor Horahan with 33 appearances, 22 of those starting. I think both, they haven't been breakthrough se- they haven't so sort of been standout seasons, but, and I did agonise over it. I did have Jay Malumbi and Jason Knight very, very close as well and did go back and forth a bit. But I, I just thought the level they were playing at and playing regularly at the top level in English football so I think Jeff Hendrick and Conor Horahan shaded it for me. Okay, Paul, what, what's yours? Yeah, well, well, again, mine's a little different. I've gone for Conor Horahan, Jason Knight, and an interesting one, just because I've seen him playing live, Jack Byrne. The reason I put Jack Byrne in is because, I mean, you see him live every week. He's, his stats, I mean, I know the seasons are different, but over the last sort of two years, even the start of this season, obviously, it's been interrupted. He's been brilliant. He scored three goals already. Like, he makes Rovers tick, and it was a big step for him to come back here and get a bit of game time. And I think when he plays well, Rovers play well, and there's no real stopping them. In terms of Har- Haurahan, when when you see Villa play decent, which wasn't a lot this season, a lot of it is down to him. His set pieces are great. He gets a lot of important goals. And he's probably not played as much as he should be for Villa if He's not injured. I think he should be in that team. 
And then Jason Knight's just had a great year all around, a breakthrough season. You've, as you said, what Rooney and Koku said about him. And every week you see him doing well, doing something well, getting called out by these lads. So those are my three anyway. Yeah, well, I think, you know, uh, Gary, you're going off levels and stuff like that. But I think the fact that um, Howerhan and Hendrick, I, I, Hendrick might have got in had he had maybe played the last number of games with Burnley to finish off the season. But the fact that he didn't, I didn't have him in there based on that. Howerhan, for me, didn't play enough, stepped up when needed to though, for the last whatever game amount of games it was. So fair play to him for that. Um, but I just look at the, the impact of the players. If you're looking at them all, I think Malumbi had an unbelievable impact. Everybody was talking about him, um, whether that be Millwall fans or Ireland fans. Um, not so much Howard and Hendrick. They're all kind of talking about how, 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 how I suppose, not great they were for, for Ireland and um, for their clubs and the fact that they weren't getting into the team. I mean, you you might be talking about Jeff Hendrick playing 24 games or starting, but a lot of them would have been at right midfield, not in centre midfield as well. So, you've got to take that into consideration. That's probably one of the reasons why he's left Burnley now because he wasn't playing his natural position. So there is those things to take in. What you said about Jack Byrne, yeah, I thought about him. Um, it was just kind of the way the season's kind of intertwined, mm. the crossover would, would be one reason why I wouldn't have him in there. Um, and maybe due to the level that he's playing at. But he had a fantastic year, if you're talking internationally and in the league, obviously winning the FAI Cup as well. So... I can see why you put him in there. People like Josh Cullen, yeah, he had a good season. It was kind of uh, diminished a little bit by injury. Then Charlton ended up getting relegated and stuff like that. So all in all, not a fantastic season. Maybe for him individually it was, but um, that's why I, I, I wouldn't have some of these. But there's some honourable mentions that I have um, written down there, like um, Alan Brown's another one. And yeah, just kind of looking around, there wasn't, Oh, you're kind of scratching the surface to try and find players to get in there and, and, and have a competition against the players that we have, the three that we have each, I think would be the, amongst the top of of the players that we have uh, at the moment. I don't think any of the honourable mentions would be worth even throwing up against them. I don't know how you feel. Yeah, yeah, just one thing. I did actually go for a bit of balance as well in mind. So I had James holding and I had Jeff on the right and Conor Horan on the left. Uh I think we could be a bit down on, on um, Jeff Hendrick. Um, he would have played a lot more since lockdown if he had agreed to stay with Burnley. And I mean, I know he's been linked with Milan and a couple of other clubs, so we'll see where he actually ends up. Um, I think he had a pretty decent uh, season. He did force his way into the team. Burnley had a good season. I mean, they finished um, top half, if I remember correctly, or close yeah, enough to it. Arsenal. Paul, no, that. No, yeah. Arsenal so, finished ahead of them. Oh, did they? Yeah, yeah, just he, caught them, I think. Yeah, well, you yeah, can thank yeah. Aaron Connolly for that. Yeah, yeah, just caught Burnley and Sheffield United. What a great season! <laughs> well, you can thank Aaron Connolly for that. But yes, uh, yeah. sorry, Gary, yeah. you were saying. Yeah, so I think um, Jeff Hendrick and Connor Horan had an excellent season for for Aston Villa. I mean, thirty three appearances. Yeah, but um, he couldn't get into the into the seat into the team for uh, about three months I remember Mick had to play him against uh, Bulgaria left back for him to get a couple of minutes he came in done well then and then was just shepherded out again so for me you're talking about consistency he, he didn't really have it although you could argue the fact that Jason Knight maybe wasn't consistent either, but if you're talking about him and his performances when he got in the team he made differences and his participation in goals for the time that he was on the pitch was really good yeah, and, and now I mean, I, I was very close for Jay Malumbi. I mean, I, I know he 35 starts, five off the bench. Um, he was an absolutely crucial player. But um, yeah, it's probably just for the bit of balance in the midfield that you have Jeff on the right and uh, Conor Horan on the left. Uh, Josh Cullen getting relegated. He did play 34 times. I, I think League One is probably going to be too low a level for him. So I hope he's... Um, Playing at a higher level next season, although Charlton aren't necessarily gone down yet with all this um, talk of points deductions mm -hmm. and everyone. I mean, even Derby are in, in, in problems, not to mind Sheffield Wednesday. So, uh, but at the moment, Charlton are relegated. Okay, well, I think that I think we're we're fairly set on our on our midfield three anyway. Um, then we're gonna have front three, and uh, this one, I've, I've this was the hardest because uh, we don't have any real right wingers that are you know that good 
uh, or had that great a season. Um, my one might be a bit controversial, and I did chop and change it about three times before I came on air here, so bear with me on this one. So I had, on the left, Ronan Curtis. In, 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 overall, he had 44 appearances, 14 goals, 8 assists. He played 89% in the starting 11. He had uh, played 88% of the minutes with a 30% goal participation. So that's why I've gone with him on the left. And then I had to pick someone on the right right wing. So I went with Kieran Sadler at Doncaster. He actually hasn't got a club at the moment because um, he wanted down his contract. But uh, he had 37 appearances, 11 goals. Um, I lost his assists, but I had them there. Um, but anyway, he... It's been in the uh, start 11, 82% of the time, and played 82% of their minutes this season with a 33% goal participation. Again, you're talking about people who are influencing goals and sc- uh, scoring goals and assisting goals. And then up front, which might come as a surprise, is Owen Doyle at Swindon with 92%. Uh, he was in the start 11, 90% of the minutes, he had a 56% goal participation. Albeit he was playing in League 2, but he was absolutely unbelievable. And now he's after joining Bolton. I know that uh, he had some problems with his family where he's kind of too far away at Swindon. And having the fact that his family live in Liverpool, I think the Bolton move came just the right time for him. But they've been my three. And I'll come to the honourable mentions and so on after I hear your teams and kind of um, go through it that way. So, Gary. Okay, Paul. I, I have none of yours. Okay. <laughs> and I... I did look for a bit of balance, maybe shoving somebody in. But my three are Michael Obafemi, 11 starts, 13 off the bench, four goals, including crucial goals, the winner at Stamford Bridge, crucial equaliser at Old Trafford. Um, again, playing in a, a very good, decent Premier League mid-table side, Southampton. And uh, Michael Obafemi gets in for me. Uh, Dizzy is my centre forward. He would be for the national team, and he was. I mean, I think 24 starts, six off the bench, four goals for Sheffield United, played really well since lockdown, was fantastic in the team that beat Chelsea there, hammered Chelsea 3 0. Um, I think Dizzy did enough um, in a, a, a club in the Premier League that were very close to European football. So, Dizzy for me is centre forward. And, and the other one I have is Aaron Connolly on the left. I think Aaron. Uh, did enough 15 starts, 11 a sub, maybe a bit influenced by his great goal um, yesterday. But um, he, he again, he, he arrived on the scene with those two goals against Tottenham. And I think he, even though the goals hadn't been coming for him, I think he'd been playing really well for Brighton. And I, again, I, I've gone down to the level. I mean, Brighton, they stayed up comfortably enough in the end. They think it's like 41 points. Uh, he's... Maybe not exactly first choice starter in the team, but he he gets a lot of minutes for Brighton. He makes a difference, and uh, I think just the level he's playing at it's it's two it's two leagues above um, the likes of Kieran Sadler and Ronan Curtis. So my three are Michael Ovafemi, uh, David McGoldrick, and Aaron Connolly. Controversial, <laughs> Paul. Yeah. Well, for me, I've gone two out of three the same as yourself, Paul, and probably one controversial one. Because of the whole situation at right wing, obviously, Kieran Sadler is the only one who we can really think had a proper decent season. I went for someone who would kind of just fit in there and do the job, and that's James McLean. No shoehorning. They have to be able to play in that position. He needs ah, to play there. Right. Okay. Um, <laughs> I don't know then. I'm a bit lost. Uh, yeah, I'll get do- slaughtered in the comments. I'll go, I'll, go, I'll go to the other two anyway, but I don't know about right wing. Um, Ronan Curtis on the left for me, because obviously he had a very good season, as you mentioned, all the stats already, and was unlucky not to get promoted with Portsmouth. I think now that they didn't get promoted, he might move on, because he's had a couple of years there now where he's done really well, might move on to a championship side and really step on then. And up front, Owen Doyle as well, because, I mean, he scored 26 goals, and I don't really think what mar- it matters what level it is. If you score 26 goals, you deserve to be in a team of the season, and that's it for me. The right wing, I, I'm i lost there. I don't really have anyone, bar Sadlier, who I could put in there. So I'll, I'll just... I'll put, no, not Robinson. I'll put in Sadlier instead. You you mentioned the stats already. I'll agree with you on that. The stats say all for me, so Sadlier in at right wing. So you've gone for the same front three as me? Yeah. Well, I was gonna, I was gonna pick, you know, that way, but 
you won't let me so well no it's just it's just because James McLean never plays on the right you know so he, he, he played on the he played on the right a couple of times this season a couple of times I mean, well, you can have it like, if I if I if I can have Daryl O'Shea at centre back, you can have it. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I, you're I, really clutching at straws there. I, I I'd I'd like to have it because I think he's really stepped up the last while, particularly since Michael O'Neill came in, and he's played in a number of positions, right wing included as well. I think he'd just fit in and play there, and he'd do a job regardless of where he plays on the pitch. And he's got seven goals and nine assists for Stoke this year, so I th- I think he deserves to be in. So I'd like I'd like to put him in right wing. Okay, he was sure. close for me. He was he had 34 starts as well, and he has he's definitely improved. I think his second half of the season has been significantly better than his first half of the season. So uh, I would have had James quite close to my team, but um, it's just the level he was in a relegation battle with Stoke, and that's I have considered the level to be very important. Yeah. One one honourable mention I had actually for centre forward was James Collins. Uh, hmm. He had uh, 14 goals in 44 starts, two sub appearances, and crucial to Luton Town actually staying in the championship, and uh, probably a level up from Owen Doyle, and that's why I, I I had James Collins probably the closest one. But for me, I think Didsy did enough in the Premier League to to be the starting centre forward. Hmm. Yeah, well, I actually when I when I looked at the stats compared to McGoldrick and compared to Owen Doyle, I was looking four goals, 30 appearances, then I was looking at Owen Doyle, 28 games and 25 goals in the league, and you're talking about Premier League, and, and I appreciate all that type of stuff, but you, you you want someone who can put the ball in the back of the net, and I know what Didzy offers, and this is why I, I, I actually had Didzy in originally, and then I went back and I looked and I said, I can't, I can't, I can't put him in there with the season that Owen Doyle has had. If you're talking about in a realistic sense, who would you start in a, in a match for Ireland? Of course, it would be David McGoldrick. Yeah. But if you're talking about the season that they had individually, that's ba- what this is based on. And I know what Dizzy brings to Sheffield United, and I think that was shown more so at the second half of the season, what he does, because there was more eyes on Sheffield United because more games were live, and people could see what he was doing for the team, not necessarily for himself, if that makes sense. Yeah. So it's, I know... He's not going to score you 10, 15 goals a season. But what he will bring is assists and other people into play. And he, you know, he'll make the ball stick for you up the other end, which is what you need. And what we badly needed against Georgia when uh, James Collins was playing. Dizzy did it excellently at home. Got a standing ovation. The year he's had with Ireland and the campaign he's had with Ireland, that was another thing I had you know, as a thumbs up beside him, that I definitely, it was so, like, I know we're talking about goals, and, you know, it's night and day between McGoldrick and Doyle, but I did really, really, really want to put Dizzy into that team, but I just had to, I had to let on the edge for the goals that he scored. On the left, McLean, I really wanted to pick him, I really, I had him, and I was like, I have to pick him, I have to pick him, and then I looked at the numbers, and I compared it with Curtis, who was playing, you know the the playoffs and everything else, and it's just Curtis Curtis individually had a better season than him in that in the mm. same position. I know he was moved around, but since Michael O'Neill has came in and James McLean has been fantastic, and he was key to them staying up. Um, but yeah, if you're looking at it over as an overall season, I think Roland Curtis is a better season than James McLean, albeit it's in a lower level. And Kieran, sadly, I'm surprised that Doncaster haven't tried to renew his contract or give him a better deal because again. He, if he's not scoring goals, he's assisting goals. And I thought since he's moved to Doncaster, it's been a great move. It's been a great transfer for them. And I don't even think he went for a fee when he left Cork originally. So it'd be interesting to see who picks him up. And if a championship team take a gamble, I'd be interested to see if a championship team take a gamble on uh, Curtis as well. Because, you know, he, he's not going up now with, with, with Portsmouth. Uh, and and I, I think it has to go and say as well, a lot of the players that we mentioned in this team have all signed contracts this season with their clubs. I think McGoldrick, Doherty, Stevens, I think Egan might have as well. But a lot of them have signed new contracts. Malumbi signed three contracts since the start of the season, I think. Three new ones. Um, So, whatever way you want to look at that. But, uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I think that's fair to say. I think if we're going to look through honourable mentions, um, who else is there? There's, for for me anyway, Aaron Connolly, Michael Obafemi, Shane Long, uh, Scott Hogan, uh, Birmingham as well, mm-hmm. uh, Callum Robinson, 
done okay on the last day of the season, but no, mm. overall. Scott Hogan, if he had a kept up his form from since before coronavirus came in, he'd have been looking at, you know, definitely a spot in there, but he didn't. Um he didn't score enough, I think, either. Is for me, uh, Callum Robinson uh, had some good moments for both uh, Sheffield United and West Brom, but not enough, I think, either. Yeah, yeah. Mm. And, and look, I, I would have had uh, Connolly or Obafemi had they played more games and scored more goals, but I think next season you'll see more of them. And I think they'll be more in contention for this team this season. Not like they're going to care anyway, what we say, but you know what I mean. Um, it's it will be interesting to see what way. We kind of line up next year, but I think all in all, I, th- I think everyone's fairly happy with with their team on this, and I think it's up to anyone who wants to get their, you know, team. Let us know in the comments, as it says there. Have your say, comment below. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Huge thanks to Paul and Gary for joining me, and uh, yeah, let us know what you think of all our teams in the comments, and give us your team. And you know, are we mad? Have we left someone out? We might have left someone out and completely forgot about someone. I don't think we have, but if we have. Do let us know and uh, thanks for watching and we'll speak to you all soon.